are listening to the Midweek Redemption Podcast, a resource from Redemption City Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. For more information about our church, please visit our website at redemptiongr.org. City. Welcome to the Midweek Redemption Podcast. This is the episode that you have all been waiting weeks and weeks and weeks, maybe months for. This is the episode in which we get to interview our very own Christy Voss. Christy, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, as we were setting up this interview, I, I mentioned to you that you had been name dropped in at least at least two episodes before. So it, it's only fitting that we now hear from hear from the person herself. So good to have yeah, you. Yeah, it was a good reminder that I needed to go back and listen to all of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was quite a surprise to me. But um, I did go back and listen and they were very sweet, sweet um, words. So. Yes. Yeah, a lot of, it sounds like there's a, a really sweet sisterhood here at Redemption City. Yeah, yeah, there really is. Great. Well, uh, we do a three, two, one, uh, get to know you interview style, uh, three people, two places and one experience that kind of shaped you, made you into the person that you are today. And uh, yeah, we could just jump in. You can start three, two, one, one, two, three, or whatever order makes sense to you. Sure. Well, we'll go three, two, one. That seems uh, fitting. We'll start with that. Um, And it really, and I, I heard other people echo this too. Like it really was quite a large challenge to think like, who am I including? Who am I leaving yeah. out? Leaving out? Um, is this like, a specific person at a specific time in my life? Is it broad? Um, but I did, you know, I've got, I've got to say my husband, Kevin first, who is both specific and now we've been married for 14 years. So mm-hmm. that's pretty broad as yes. well. Um, I remember when my mom told me, gosh, we I hit whatever birthday it was for her that she had been married longer than she hadn't. And specifically wow. that she'd been a Huber longer than she'd been a Cavell in terms of last names and <laughs> to her and yeah, I was 25 when I got married, so we were not right there, but yes. you know, quickly approaching. Yeah, you know, getting there. Yeah, what that what that means in your life, and so of course Kevin is huge in that. He's gone through so much with me um, as I've grown up. Really, not necessarily in the physical sense, right, but more in the emotional maturity, spiritual sense, and sure. as walked through all of that with me, has fully supported me, um, has really shown me what it means to be fully known and fully wow. loved, um, which is not necessarily what I always want. He does like to <laughs> remind me when, you know, when something's happening and he's like, well, this is, you know, you're looking at it this way. How do you know that? You know, and he likes to remind me, I, I do actually know you pretty well, um, which is both hard and yeah just an amazing thing. Um, uh-huh. He's been a very big gift to me. Um, teammate in so many ways, parenting, ministry, just logistics of life. Um, yeah, very, very grateful to him and his willingness to go with me through some um, maybe unusual journeys, things uh-huh. that he didn't plan on doing public school yeah. for one. Um, oh yeah. Uh-huh. And, when we first moved to Easttown, which he was in full support of, um, we just didn't talk about schools because he says, there's no way I would ever send my kids to public school. And I say, there's no way I would ever send my kids to private school. So um, it was, I, I have to give him a lot of credit for being willing to listen to <clears throat> my heart and my reasoning on that and mm-hmm. being willing to think that through. And I think that's pretty emblematic of, of who he's, Mm. Uh, who he is and how he has really like walked alongside of me and mm-hmm. not shut me down on things that I know he wanted to. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Kevin, very, very important in my life, very influential. God has really used him. Um, I'm going to lump my parents together as my second Fair person. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. Uh, yeah. And, and they're very different people. We won't go into those differences totally and how that has affected me but uh they as a as a couple as a parent team I think have um just been pretty pretty amazing not perfect um at all neither of them were given 
good role models mm -hmm. as parents or um, as marriage partners. Uh, they knew that um, both of them came to Christ later in life, early college, um, late high school. And so, and, and knew that that meant in very good ways that they were going to do their marriage, their parenthood very, very differently. Um, but that's, when you have no model, that's challenging. And they, hard, they, yeah. weren't, they weren't perfect, but they were very clear with us why <clears throat> they were doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially now being a parent myself, I recognize how hard that is. One, to even know sometimes to be so clear about why you're doing something and then mm -hmm. to be able to follow through on it and to make adjustments when you figure out, oh, that was, oops, that was totally wrong. You know, yeah. I, I screwed that up. Um, so so you, been, are you saying they like, they kind of came from like less structured backgrounds and, and then they brought a lot of structure to your, your childhood? Um, both less structured and very um, non-Christian. Um, my, my mom's got a crazy um, a soap opera story of a life um, and she's just, uh, I think just a great picture of who, what God can do, who what the circumstances God can take someone out of mm. and they can live in joy and forgiveness when, you know, the world says that's a person that deserves to have all the anger and to cope in whatever way works for them. Um, yeah. And uh, God says, no, right. Like I have, I've brought you to live in joy um, outside of your circumstances. And she's done just been an amazing uh, role model in that, but but specifically, she has said about parenting, like she was shown nothing good um, in terms of of a model for parenting, nothing. Yeah. Um, and she had to turn that around and herself say, "I want my kids to know that they're loved by me, by God. I want them to feel safe. I want wow. them to thrive." And I'm not sure how to do that, but that you know, I do know my goal. Yeah, wow, that's, that's, that's been valuable as a parent myself too to say I don't know how to do all the things that I want to do either and her you know those goals that she had are, are also mine and maybe even some of mine tweaking from like oh my parents pendulum swings kind of far on some of that and and caused maybe some challenges that they didn't anticipate or mean to and I'm trying to temper some of that a little mm -hmm. bit um but uh it's 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 having the goal and working towards it and being clear about like I, I am trying my best and I will make mistakes um but you know God's walking alongside both of us in this parenting challenge and in this growing up challenge and we will we will make it to him so awesome yeah so they were they were yeah my parents were wonderful in that um both the mistakes that they made and the successes that they had they were very transparent in who who they were and who they were bringing us to be as kids. They wanted us just to love Jesus and to really know what that meant, um, all the things that came with that. So they, they were um, models of generosity and hospitality too. Um, you know, we, we love people above loving things um, and we, or time. Um, wow. and they, they, they continue to do that. My dad, just retired this past year and, you know, COVID year and homeschooling and all that. And, um, I, I asked him to take the kids for a day, um, including homeschooling so that I could do a few other things was trying to, um, organize doing some work, uh, freelance and stuff. And he, you could tell he was nervous when I asked him like, Oh <laughs> no. And he was very clear. We sat down. Um, I would love to help you out. I'm willing to try it, but I'm, I'm a little nervous three kids homeschooling. Like I'm afraid I'm going to get to the end of the day and be just done with them. And I don't, I don't want to feel that way towards my grandkids. I don't want to yeah. be frustrated. Um, but he was willing to step in and has done that so well. It's been really good for them. It's been really good for him and um, just so generous with his time. Um, and, and that's, that's who both of my parents are uh, always and have taught, uh, me to be that way as well to hold my stuff my time loosely wow um, that's great yeah it's it's been it's been wonderful and I, I think that the other aspect that 
I have seen even more so in adulthood is their willingness, their desire to grow, right? They're both in their mid sixties. They've gone through a lot. They've been now Christians for a long time and have had various church leadership roles and such. And, and you would think that they, they probably know a lot. They can probably set back and, you know, give other people advice, but they are constantly reading and learning and adjusting their own, um, opinions on things and saying like, you know, what? I really was, we were, we were pretty legalistic, you know, 10, 20 years ago and we made these mistakes and we've grown in this way and just, uh, um, complete, I think openness to like, God is hundred percent still working on me and that's expected. That's good. And I embracing that. So, um, just, yeah, really, really helpful to see them as, adults and as my parents still um still growing and still wanting to grow and that helps me like not get so set in my oh I know what this is about right and I've been through this and so um yeah God's got to be done in that area right Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah they've been very good examples for that so yeah my parents huge of course in the span of my life and also um I think continuing as um, good models of adulthood Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so that's one, two. Sorry, I'm kind of zipping. Any questions or clarifications on any of those? Oh, um, well, uh, you put me on the spot here. I, I was, <laughs> I, I, well, I, I did, I did have the, uh, I did have the curiosity. Like, you, it sounds like they, your parents provided just like a lot of strengths, a lot of like a, a great role models on a lot of levels. And uh, I'm curious, were there any like, um, uh, maybe like you mentioned mistakes or something like that where like that you feel like have shaped you as well in the sense um, all our parents do the best they can you know nobody's right, perfect kind of thing right and, and you know um my 16 year old self would probably not be very happy with how what a glowing picture I'm painting of them <laughs> um, you know it, it was it certainly wasn't always easy um so one thing that my dad is famous for Um, throughout our childhood (laughs) and I find myself repeating um so mistake but also maybe uh I I can see why and how he was famous for his lectures so Mm. um, my dad's a very logical person he's an engineer (laughs) and (laughs) he was just convinced that if that eventually we could talk through you know one of our kids the kids was I was disrespectful or um I don't know. We were, we were relatively good kids in terms of like, nobody was out uh, drinking it, you know, whatever. And, and we, we weren't terribly rebellious, but we had our, we had our issues that came up over and over. So if I was mouthy or disrespectful, he figured if we sat down and talked long enough, he could convince me that I was wrong and that I needed to change my behavior and whatever. But I, I am also very much like my dad. So I also figured I, in that same span of time, could probably convince him why he was wrong and whatever I did was appropriate. And um, I I do find myself with my children tending to do a little bit the same thing, right? Like if I can tell them enough logic, then they will, of course, see the errors of their ways and we won't ever see this behavior again because it's been, you know, they understand what was what was the problem? Um, and we all laugh about it now as we look back and my dad will shake his head and like, Oh, I just, I don't, I know. I just was so convinced that I was going to, I was going to change you. I was going to convince you. And I don't know why I thought that. Um, so that's, I I think one area that Uh just personality wise, um, you know, I, I, I think one of the other things that was challenging and maybe we've had to, Kevin and I have had to put our own spin on or look in our hearts um my parents are very have always been very frugal very aware of money didn't come from money didn't have money at at all and struggled um in a lot of ways and um learned to be very much uh careful with their money live within their means uh we never um had anything that we couldn't afford but that was also a very um, common talking point. Nope, that's too expensive. Nope, we were very careful about this. Um, And started to create, I think, 
an idol of money in the opposite way, like an idol out of frugality as opposed to an idol out of materialism. Um, and, and I know that has, there, there are nuances to that. Um, and Kevin and I have had to kind of struggle through that as both of our families kind of approached finances in a different yes. way. Oh, yeah. um, and, and, and again, as I see my parents getting older and growing, I see them with a little bit looser hold on some of that. Um, and have appreciated watching them grow in that way and their um, lack of criticism for uh, us adult kids as we fumble through a little bit like what does it look like to be an adult and how do you handle the money God has given you Um, you know is it enough to check the box of saying oh I tithe and I make my bills every month Um, you know it's it's complicated so Um, I think those were some of the things that, especially as a kid, I would have said, like, they're totally screwing this up. Um, <laughs> as an adult, I, you know, yeah. I can put some softer edges on that and say, like, yeah, yeah there were some challenges. But, yeah. um, you know, again, I, I really do think that they were trying their very best to be open-eyed about the, what they were doing and to check that against um, biblical truth. Mm-hmm. That's so. good. That makes sense. Good, good stuff. Your third person? Um, are we moving on? Person number yeah. three? Yeah, person okay. number three. Um, it, uh, this is, again, is probably more of a group of people, but I will I will, I will put one name on it. Um, uh, pastor Crow, who was my pastor, late high school, uh, would have been college if I really went to church much in college, and then... Um, post-college for a few years. Um, and, and honestly, he may or may not remember me. We didn't have a lot of personal um, relationship, but I think he represents uh, kind of the people and the ideas that God brought into my life at a certain time when he had softened my heart enough to be ready for wow. it. Um, I, I grew up in very much as you know, I've said a a believing, strong Christian home. Um, But that's, uh, you know, you're not, you're not always, I think there can be a little bit of, I don't want to say too much, but where it's so present that you don't notice so much Mm -hmm. anymore. You kind of hardened your heart to, um, uh, it's it's just, it's everywhere. And you don't notice it, but yes. I'm losing a word that's very like inoculated to it. You're just Thank you. Like, yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and, and I think I, I, you know, did my Christian thing. We we're very involved. I looked very good, um, but it was not very personal. I had uh, my mom will tell you that I accepted Jesus when I was like five. I have a notoriously bad memory. I definitely don't remember that. Um, I do remember throughout high school, junior high, maybe is a more appropriate time, you know, laying in bed and going like, Oh man, did I really mean it? I'll bet I'll pray this time. And I'll I'll bet I'll really mean it this time. Uh, But that was more based out of fear and kind of evaluating my behavior and like, Oh man, I really am not perfect. So that's, that's a pretty shallow roots to go out into the world with. Uh, (laughs) And, and, you know, I, I did okay. Um, I did, I I had some rebellion, but I just definitely didn't love Jesus. Right. I I really wasn't walking with him. I wasn't finding my values in biblical truths. I just was kind of skating through. And, uh, so Pastor Crow, we'll, we'll put the title on kind of a few things that came from the church at the time. This is, my parents still go to church. Is his first name Steve? Steve, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was a uh, Camille's pastor in California, like before he oh, came to Great Rapids. Yeah, isn't that a small oh, world? That, that is really yeah. funny. <laughs> West Michigan, man. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Crossroads of the universe. <laughs> Everything is connected. Yes. And, and um, he says left the church, and I, I honestly don't even know everything that's surrounded that. So if anybody out there, including Camille, has some um, negative experiences with Pastor Crow, I apologize. But I, I, what he really brought to my life and some things that were happening in the, the church at that time was um, a better, like, academic, I'm going to say, knowledge of the Bible and therefore God. So I was, I was coming out of college, right, where I felt like 
I had learned a lot. I knew a lot. I had a lot of experiences. I was good at studying, um, but hadn't really ever applied that to the Bible and hadn't, whether or not I had actually seen that in my growing up, I, it didn't sink in. Um, but, so it was a really good time for me in my life to see like, wow, you can spend months um, going through a, a chapter, a section of scripture and like get all of this stuff out of it. And that's, that's how he preached um, at the time. And it, it really just was so valuable to me um, to, to mine all of that academic knowledge out of scripture that then God was using to really like work in my heart with. Um, mm -hmm. And wow. that was paired with like, there was, a, I was going to Bible study at the church at the time we were going through precept study by K Arthur, uh -huh. similar in style to like BSF or yes. like some of the stuff Jen Wilkin does. Um, and, and again, it's just a real deep dive into like, um, God's wisdom and intelligence and how scripture is woven together. And like, uh, it wasn't the, the, the nice fluffy topical and it wasn't too like deep theological, you know, getting in too heady. It was like a nice marriage of both. And that was how he preached. That was other um, education and experiences I was having in the church at the time. It just really changed my life, um, changed my relationship with God. Uh, I can't, you know, the, when my mom says, you know, it's five and I, I pray to ask Jesus into my heart for forgiveness of sins. I, I can't really tell you is that, was that the moment of my salvation? Did God really bring it later? Um, I, I have, I have struggled with wanting to know that, um, because, you know, there's, especially when I was, uh, growing up, it's that kind of like, when's your spiritual birthday? Right, um, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, but as time has gone on, I've let go of that more and more and say, I'm not sure it necessarily matters. Um, all I know yeah. is that these experiences together, um, I'm fully his and fully there. And that's God's in control of that. I don't have to yeah. have a lot of anxiety around my knowledge in that department. Yeah. Oh, so, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'll, I'll give, I'll give pastor Steve Crow the That's credit awesome. for that yeah. in this kind of, uh, interview. Um, yeah. But it was, what, yeah. What, what was the age range that you felt like you were really coming online with all that stuff? 22, maybe to 25 or so. Um, okay. and that was just about the time Kevin and I started dating as well. Um, and started going to church regularly together. And he will say similar things about, yes. um, our experience there together. And that, that was really cool in our relationship too, to like really know what it was like to grow spiritually together early in our relationship and maybe even somewhat together and somewhat just in parallel um, and just having similar experiences in that way. Um, that's been really important for us. So. Uh -huh. well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So um, those are, those are my three, people there are many many more but um those are the ones i've chosen yeah. for today yeah yeah you gotta pick it's good yeah. well, moving on to two places places yeah um so uh, i'll start chronologically um germany um as as a country but uh -huh. specifically my junior year of high school my family moved to germany um a small town called homburg which is like mid uh western germany not hamburg which is a bigger town up north um but most importantly it was just outside of a major air force base for okay. germany and for europe uh -huh. actually ramstein if you see um an air force base in the movies it's almost always ramstein air force uh -huh. base if they're uh -huh. flying in and out of europe um so uh my parents had had for most of my growing up well and they probably would almost still say this now have felt like they were meant to be in missions um and uh and god just never yeah never really made that happen for them i think that's been very difficult in terms of feeling like god has given you a calling but like no open doors yeah wow um, so at, at the time my dad had designed a machining system for his company which was based out of germany but had a plant here he was given the opportunity to help install that system 
uh, its plant over in Germany and my parents took it. I'm probably going to be wrong about the timeline exactly here. Um, but it was maybe somewhere early in the summer. We were gone in six weeks. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and they really felt like if we get over there, we'll make enough connections. My dad will get a different job over there in Germany. We'll be able to stay and that will be their tent making missions. Start. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We'll go from there. Uh -huh. So it was my junior in high school, which uh, was not, I was not excited about leaving in <laughs> any way. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah, at all. Um, and we moved over there. Again, we're close to the Air Force Base. Um, this is the closest English speaking school. So, um, and my dad's company paid for us to go to school there, myself and my younger brother. My older brother was in college at that point, so didn't go with us. Um, and it just, it was very pivotal in my young life um not spiritually spiritually obviously as we know that came a little bit later um i grew up in hudsonville before that hudsonville small now it was much smaller than much more secluded very much a bubble um everybody was dutch and baptist and intermarried and knew each <laughs> other and it was you, you went to the same you know with the same kids you went to kindergarten with you graduated from high school with um people didn't come in and out really um there was nobody of any color other than dutch white i was considered quite dark um so it i had kind of pigeonholed myself into who i thought i was um at Hutt in hudsonville um and then i went to germany and was with all these kids who at the time, the, the programming kind of was for officers who are going to be the ones that have kids in high school. Um, they moved every three years. They got a new assignment. So this high school, you know, a third of it turned over every year. Um, and people were so open to being different, having different friends, making different friends, um, being interested in different things. And um, I just found such a blank slate that I could reinvent myself and have different friends and be who I wanted to be. Um, it was very important. Academics were very important there, um, uh, which I had tended to suppress um, mm. in years past. There was mm. a time, and I couldn't tell you what grade, maybe it was fifth grade, where my teacher had tested me and gotten me into some uh, advanced learning program or whatever. And my parents were like, wonderful, that's awesome. And I begged and cried and threw the biggest fit because I didn't want to go. I didn't want to be different. I didn't want to be oh, uh -huh. one of the smart kids. And whether it's to my parents' credit or not, they, they let me have my way. Um, and, and it was just so refreshing to be in an environment where it was valued to live into your strengths, whether that was cool. yeah. academics or um, athletics or whatever. Um, and so just very, uh, it was just a very important experience for my life then. Um, and also just opening my eyes to like, change is good. We can handle this. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, that was, that was an important year for me. And I, I have looked back to that over time and as kind of like a, a rallying, like, okay, Christy, you can do something different and hard. Like that's, yeah. that you don't, have to be who you feel you are now um you can make new friends and they will you know and be in different relationships and um walk into something totally unknown and you can never want to leave either right like something you don't want to do has the potential to be something you always want to do um so That's because cool. of course yeah. then you know i we left at the end of my junior year and i was scheming with all of my friends how can I stay and graduate from here you uh -huh. know to the place yeah. I never wanted to come to yeah. um, and it, just, it didn't work out but yeah that's it's been a good good lesson for me yeah that it sounds like it, it kind of like opened the doors to like oh you can adapt and you can change and you know it's yeah. like change isn't necessarily bad and all yeah. that kind of stuff and although it by no means was like um I mean there was less spirituality there than I had experienced it all, which, you know, I, I'm not going to say it was a good or a bad thing, but it definitely was different. Um, again, Hudsonville public schools now are very different than they were, gosh, I'm getting old, uh, 30, 35 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you, 
uh, there was, I mean, there was prayer over the announcements every week. Um, so it was, uh, it was the first time it was really in a secular environment as sure. well. Uh-huh. And there was maybe some, some negative things that came with that. Um, I, I can't give you all the details exactly, but, um, to be, to be open to a different community was really big for me, um, yeah. at the time. So that's cool. So Germany for sure won. Um, and the second, um, place I would say is, uh, also related to school, Congress Elementary School. And some of um, people from church have walked through this with me um, and have heard parts of this many times. Um, But but I think it is another area of like um, walking into the unknown and and God saying, I have you here for a reason. Uh, Maybe it's not uh, as classic or what you expect in terms of a missional opportunity as it relates to Congress. I wasn't thinking about that in terms of Germany, but, um, you know, to, to walk into the unknown, not knowing what I'm going to get myself into and finding God's got it, God's got it all laid out, right? Not what I expected. Um, it's, it's just been, it's been really sweet to be there, to fail there, um, to not have my expectations met, um, but to find that's because I probably I was shooting too low, right? Like um, my expectations were very basic and me focused and what God had for me was much bigger and uh, others focused, right? Um, cool. It's, just, it's been a, a great place to be um, and it's so valuable to drive by it every time I go downtown you know we walk by there um it's it's a part of our community and part of um our community's community if that makes sense like everybody that lives around me whether I know them or not um that's a part of their community and just connects us in ways that I don't even know yeah that's great yeah it's yeah we've that's a very, very important place to me. And I think will continue to be, despite the fact that my kids are not there this year, which has been, yeah. it's been challenging. And that's I a, had, that's a huge adjustment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, been difficult even in, you know, uh, several people have called me over the last nine months, like, Hey, um, our kids are going to get to be school age soon. And thinking, wanted to talk to you about public schools and your experience there. And I have to start with the caveat, like, Oh, okay, but we're not there this year, so uh, yeah, <laughs> you know that's a little awkward, but it's still really valuable. Yeah, um, and we may be there in the future. Who knows? Yes. So. Do you, are there any uh, like stories that come to mind about your involvement in Congress? Moments um, that you thought were cool or challenging? I, I I mentioned failing, which I definitely have done there, and it has helped me learn that like it's not the worst thing that can happen. Um, which I would have said previously. So specifically, this was relatively early on and we had kind of just started the parent teacher group. um, And there was one parent that had been there for several years prior to that and um, was generally pretty negative about anything we were going to do um, because we were white, because we were new, because We were trying to create some sort of structure, anything. Um, But he also wasn't going to let us do anything without him knowing about it. So he was everywhere, Um, uh, always watching what we were doing. We had somebody that wanted to invest um, in, I'm trying to remember what it was. Maybe it was a soccer field or something, some outside organization that wanted to give money. Um, I knew this meeting was happening that was discussing something and I was walking by um, in the playground or whatever. I was like, Oh, Nate, I should invite Nate. That'll make me look really good to him. Right. Like make sure I'm including him, whatever. So I I invited Nate to come to the meeting, then learned like, Oh, actually they're kind of talking about something else. It's probably gonna be such a waste of his time and he's going to be really frustrated with me. So then I proceeded to call and uninvite him, which of course made him show up. (laughs) Right. Because what are you guys doing that you don't want me to be there for? Oh, man. Um, And a series of events after, I mean, he's so furious at me. I can remember one time, especially because it involved money, which he felt like we were for sure going to try and keep him out of. Um, 
And I, I just remember one time him sitting at a table and he wouldn't even look me in the eyes, uh, but he was so mad he could hardly talk and he just broke pencil after pencil. Oh my well, goodness. Was, yeah, talking to me, whatever he had to say. And I mean, it was not, a, he's not a small person. Like, oh man. I'm yeah. genuinely scared of him. Yeah. Um, but knew like, okay, I screwed up by how I handled that. I, I need him on my side because he carries with him um, a group of people that I don't know how to reach otherwise. Uh -huh. uh, and, and also now it's just a personal, like I need, you know, like I need to make up with Nate. Um, and in the past, and trust me, it's what I wanted to do. I just, I would have done anything at all costs to never see him again. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. But I, I didn't feel like I had the option if I wanted yeah, to right. continue to be a part of the group, if I wanted to be successful. Man, yeah. uh, his kid was going to be in school for the next three years. Like, yes. needed to deal with it. Um, and and we did long term. Like, we got there. But it still came up the time that Christy tried to keep me from whatever, I can't remember now, $15,000 or, or something. Like, oh, man, yeah. Didn't go away. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that makes me think of uh, stuff I've teaching I've heard about just like the nature of community and both like in the church and just outside. But it's like, to your point, if you want to be stuck in a community, you can't just like leave when there's conflict, you know, you gotta, you, 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 you well, I mean, those are your options. You either deal with the conflict and like grow and make amends, reconcile or, you know, or you leave. And so if you want to have any sense of like roots, um, it kind of forces you to grow. And it sounds like that's what kind of happened there with, with Nate. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, it was not fun. And there were lots of times that I wanted to just be done. And there was, um, I, I ran the meetings. I did pretty much all the leadership stuff for a year or so before. And it's not that I didn't have other people with me, but I was always like the face of things, which is, again, just not my favorite. And I know that's hard for people to believe who've seen me at Redemption for the last whatever it's been seven, eight years now. Um, but that is, that is not natural to me. That has been God pushing me into places that I'm emotionally kicking and screaming, um, you know, saying, no, that's, that's not me. And God saying, actually, I, I made you, I know who you are. Um, it, it, yeah. So anyway, I ran these meetings for the first year or so and you can ask Kevin I mean it, it took me a solid week to recover emotionally from like all that went into setting that up and talking in front of people for an hour and a half and like all the follow-up and uh, all that wow, so yeah. it, was, it was stretching it was pretty draining um but so so good in terms of growth and of oh yeah I mean I People have asked me hard questions in meetings that I didn't, I had a really terrible answer to. And um, it's not the worst thing, right? They still chose to, you know, they're still investing in the community that I am messing up and, you know, we're, we're working on it together and things that I thought went really poorly. People use as an example for like, look at how well we're doing. This happened, you know, even though it didn't live up to my standards. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wow. I, I'm I'm not the one that defines that, right? Yeah. So learning that too, like success isn't defined by what I think. Yeah, um, that was really good. So, yeah, so it, it was really, really good to be a part of that. Um, I mean, I'm kind of cheating a little bit and calling that experience a place, um, but we'll, we'll go with that. Um, oh, no, that's not cheating. That's kind of the point. <laughs> that's all good. So, um, and the last one? Experience or is there more? that we should mine out of that. Well, I mean, it sounds like there's a ton we can mine out of that, but probably <laughs> for the sake, maybe we should do, uh, we should do a midweek redemption episode on schooling and like participating community. That'd be fun. Honestly, it, it's such a huge topic and I have a lot to say, but I have such a limited experience at the same time. Um, yeah, it's, there's a lot. And there's a lot of us that are struggling through that, especially even this year, which, you know, yes, I would have said man. last year, like at school, we got that, like, it's hard, but at least we know what we're doing. Um, this year, no idea. Um, yes. No idea. So, okay, so but I will move on because yeah, this is going longer than I thought. I guess I can talk. Yeah, um, it's great stuff. So, so uh, you know, my other my experience, my what I really am labeling as experience um, is maybe fairly. There, you can draw some parallels between 
um, my experience at Redemption City, which I, I, I really think is one of the larger things in my adult life um, and my experience in Congress, just in terms of like being, you know, I don't want to say pushed into, because nobody pushed me. Um, God, I think, opening the doors in front of me and saying like, are you going to walk into what I have for you? Um, Cause it's leadership. The one thing you don't ever want to do. Um, that's, that's where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, been very challenging. Um, it's also been super rewarding and very um, full of growth and sweet people. Um, again, so I went back and listened to um, some of the other interviews that you guys have done and just, Listening to Jamie and Sarah both mentioning, um, you know, our women's leadership group and and the, the how sweet our relationship as is as um, women, especially women that were together during a certain period, it's 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 so true. I have described both of those women actually in the past as people that I don't call when I'm having a bad day. I don't see them all the time, but I know if there was ever anything major in my life any crises any like something huge they've got my back 100 percent. i will you know they're the people that i call yeah um, because they they know me on a level that doesn't again mean like they know what's what i'm doing this week or like what my favorite flavor of ice cream is but they know me in a much deeper more important way mm -hmm. that, um, yeah we've just we've been through some stuff together um and and i wouldn't have that if i hadn't been through like that leadership struggle and the like what, what are we how are we putting this together how do we teach our women well how do we teach our congregation well and mm -hmm. uh, kind of some of those conversations that are difficult and then the execution which is infinitely more difficult um, <laughs> to say like yes. here's what we think about community groups and um our women and how we want to teach them and bring them uh up and equip them and then here's the real world of somebody sitting in front of you and saying you know you're just you're not living up to my expectations as um a woman in my life and the person that i'm looking to 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 train me and teach me and that has happened to me multiple oh. times one in particular where, yeah, a, a couple sat me down and the husband said, I, I'm going to start speaking for my wife and then I'll let her finish up. And um, you're just, you're, you're not doing what we are expecting you to do. You're not living up to it. <laughs> wow. um, yeah, but they, they weren't wrong for one. Well, they weren't totally wrong. Um, they had, they had some points, um, but it also helped me to say like, you your expectations are wrong. You're asking of me what you should be asking of yourself or looking to God for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I am not, I, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm a tool that God is using. Yes, but I am not who you need to be putting all of your faith and trust in, right? Like God has put the spirit in you. You are capable of that through him. Like that's, that's not me. Um, but that's very difficult as someone who, who, uh, naturally gets their value and their approval from what other people think of them. That's oh, really yeah. Wow, wow. To say, believe, um, live like, uh, that's, that's been really challenging. Um, so that, I mean, that's, that's one of the experiences or lessons through um, being a part of Redemption City. There's plenty more um, that sticks out in particular is one of the hardest uh -huh. times of community group. And then yeah. that particular experience within that time. Um, it's difficult. But. Yeah. So it sounds like just to recap, like redemption city kind of is the umbrella of for your experience. And then kind of within that would be the like stretch point of like stepping into leadership and grappling with like the women's leadership team. And then, and then also just like the, uh, uh, you know, getting <laughs> super hard feedback, I guess, as a community group leader and stuff like that. Is that kind of the, yeah. the two, two aspects of your time in Redemption City? Yeah, that's a, that's a good summary. I also like, it hasn't, um, you know, I would say Mike has taken on what um, Pastor Krogh started in terms of like, I just, I yes. have grown a lot spiritually, not only through the experiences of leadership, which um, yeah, have been 
both difficult, but you know, I, I don't want to paint it with too dark of a brush. It's been wonderful at the same time. Um, but, but in terms of like just scriptural knowledge, uh, you know, I don't think I would have imagined, um, where I have, what I have learned through, um, the sermon series and Mike's teaching and his encouraging us to learn on our own and different Bible studies we've done and such. So, um, that was maybe started at my old church and, um, but yeah, just so much, so much growth at redemption. Um, and when Kevin and I were looking for a new church, um, which really, we just wanted something, a, a neighborhood church. We were finding ourselves, we had, Charlotte was a baby. She was a difficult baby. And we were finding ourselves, um, without super deep roots and community there and pulling mm -hmm. away because of the 30 minute drive and the fussy baby and all that stuff and saying, yeah. like, oh, we really, we need someplace closer and we need, we need to dig into the community. And it, it was probably, you know, um, not the fault of the church that we didn't have such deep community. It was probably ourselves. And maybe we could have done that if we chose to, but it seemed easier and maybe just what God had for us to bring us someplace else to start anew. Um, yeah. So uh, I, yeah, just, just grateful for what Redemption City has been in my life in so many areas, mm -hmm. uh, spiritual growth, emotional growth, um, leadership growth. Yeah. It's been a very, um, and just sweet relationships. So. Awesome. That's a, that's a encouraging testimony. I'm uh, curious, just you, because you were kind of in on the ground floor of kind of launching Redemption City. Is that true? You and Kevin? Yeah, somewhat. So we were there before in terms of like when they were building up and um, gaining uh, their initial capital investment or, or whatever. Um, but uh, I think we came the second or third week that they were meeting in the upper room. Uh -huh. um, and we were hungry to be involved and yeah. did not know in any way what it meant to be a part of a church plant. Yeah. Uh, we just, we wanted a community. We wanted to jump in and we were excited. Um, and I'm glad that I think that we didn't know exactly what was coming. <laughs> Especially then we would have been very yes. hesitant. Yes. You know, I'm like, oh, uh, no, that, that seems like a lot. We're, yeah. we're hoping to be more takers here. Yeah, um, right. With really good relationships. Yes. Uh, so... Yeah, it was, but, but yeah, we've, we've gone through then from, from then on out. Lewis was a tiny baby. So we mark how long we've been with the church by how old Lewis is. Nice. I don't, I don't know, maybe a month old, very yeah. little. Uh -huh. so. That's cool. So I'm curious kind of with that perspective, what are your, uh, when you think about kind of the next season of Redemption City, what are your, your hopes, hopes yeah. and dreams? Um. Wow. You know, to see happen or see Redemption City become? I, I, I really think that hasn't changed much for me. Um, I, I really, I, I really desire, or I, I know God desires redemption, uh, like, like most churches to have strong, strong community, people that know each other, people that point each other, to Christ before all else. Um, and I think that we, we do do that. I think sometimes we let logistics get in the way, right. And, um, small children and all the things that make, yes. um, that both difficult and possible, right. Like, um, walking through having small kids while being a part of everything, um, I think has taught me in ways that it couldn't if I had all the time in the world, right? Yeah. Like if I was, you know, retired and all my kids were out of the house. Um, so, so I think God has some unique things for Redemption City and saying like, yes, life is chaos. Like we got babies, you know, I mean, it's in the water as yes. you have experienced. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> babies everywhere. We've got new marriages and new homes and new jobs and, everything's in a little bit of flux. Um, but this is, we're, we're growing within this. You do, yeah, you do have time. Um, you have special allowances at this stage in life that you're not going to have later. And some of that's just so desperately on an hour by hour basis, needing God's grace and, yes. you know, um, getting us through. Um, 
so uh, I'm probably getting a little off your question of what, do, what, do, what are my desires for Redemption City? I think to really live into who God has made us to be. We're a small, super invested, chaotic church that like can grow so much in all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's great. And, yeah, I, I mean, I kind of hear you saying is like acknowledging the intensity of the, you know, the chaos of life with little babies and, you know, the, the, our kid to grown up ratio in Redemption City is pretty, <laughs> pretty staggering. But it's pretty intense. Yeah. yeah, but just to kind of like press in. Yeah, and I think it's easy. Uh, I think we can take the excuse from both the secular and the Christian community. Like, now's not the time. Just wait until kids are out of the house, and then you know you can really dig in and have your uh, time, your spiritual growth time. You know, whatever. But like, now is when we. Now is when we need it. Now is when we can. Yeah. Um, can. Uh, see how important um, reliance on God is, how important knowledge of scripture is. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. What well, it also makes me think, you know, like it can be tempting to like want to engage in community when you like have your stuff together and the house is clean and you're showered and <laughs> you know, like yeah. put together. And, and I feel like, I know for us, like trying to press into community with little kids, just like we will like have the door unlocked. Like that's what we can do, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just I, come over. I have said that to me, my community group many, many times. At the beginning, you know, it was the focus of my week. Community group night, Wednesday night. I mean, I prepped for dinner on Monday and cleaned and, you know, I, and then I had to clean up afterwards and whatever. And I had, that is not life giving to anybody because my house looks way too clean for anybody else to feel, you know, like they can have, <laughs> yeah, right, you yeah. know, or host community group and I'm exhausted. And so now I just try to make sure that there's not any poop stains in the toilet. And I call that good. Nice. Because that's, I feel like you don't really want to see that. But that's a good pro tip. Yeah. yeah. This is the, this is the standard for hosting community group. No poop right. stains. <laughs> I'm very serious about that. Yeah. Yeah. If we set up that standard, like this is what it has to look like. Um, I can't live up to that. I, yeah. I don't want anybody else to try, you know, yes. then we're sacrificing the areas that are really important for what right. is not. Right. Um, you know. Yeah. That's good. Good. That's a good word. I think for everybody. Anything else uh, that you want to share before we uh, sign off here? Uh, nothing comes to mind. I will sure I will think about it tonight as I'm trying to fall asleep. Oh man, forgot to say that. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Now yeah. I, I, I'm drawn blank. Well, we can always do part two. You touched on a lot of topics. <laughs> I think would be fun to dive in, and you know, potentially we have months and years of podcasting ahead of us, so we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, I really appreciate your openness with all this. I think it'll be be a great, uh, great thing for the church. And, and, you know, Camille and I have been blessed. We kind of crashed your community group all summer long, blessed by your food and, and, you know, just the sweet group of folks that you guys have gathered. So we do love them. Thankful for you and thank you for your, your legacy here at the church. (laughs) Thanks. We are excited about you joining us. That's for sure. Oh, thanks. Well, thanks to all of you for listening out there and we'll see you next time on the midweek redemption. (laughs) 